What's going on guys? Welcome back into another video and today, today is the first official episode of this brand new series that I am doing. It is a four year consideration series revolving around everything, award season, award predictions, nominations, reactions, all of the above. This series is not going to be very long. Obviously the Oscars are coming up very soon and once the Oscars are over, it's kind of stagnant until we get to the end of the year, but I thought we'd get a few episodes out just to start it. Then when December rolls around, you know, November, December, when no more nominations start to come out, we'll rekindle it. But this is something I'm very passionate about, something that I've really um, enjoyed in the last few years as I've started to really get into movies is award season. It's one of my favorite times of the year. So I thought, hey, I want to talk about it. I don't just want to babble about it on Twitter. I want to actually talk about it with you guys here on YouTube. So today is the first episode. We are going to be, basically what we're going to be doing today is um, reacting to the Golden Globes and the Critics' Choice Awards. So basically what I'm going to do is I have all of my predictions. I put them in a spreadsheet. I predict each category that is applicable for me. And I pick um, what I want to win, what could win, and what should win. So I'll have my actual, my, my should win is my actual prediction. And then I, as the night goes on, I score them. Red means didn't get it right. Green means got it right. Yellow means it, I predicted it in the could win, but I didn't predict it in the should win. So it's kind of like a like a little medium win, I guess. And then I have the actual winners. So we're going to go into that. I'm going to just do my predictions for this episode. Next episode will be my reaction to the SAG Awards, which are happening this weekend. And then the episode after that will be my reactions to the Oscar nominations. And then we'll have a final episode, which is my predictions for the Oscars. Then we will have the finale of this, which is the reaction to the Oscars. So guys, First off, if you are new, thank you so much for taking the time to click on the video, like, and comment, and subscribe, and all of that means the absolute world. Um, let me know down below in the comments what were your reactions to the Golden Globes and the Critics' Choice. Anything revolving around award season, let me know down in the comments below. Um, but yeah, this is going to be a shorter episode of it. It's not going to be too long. I'm just going to go through, tell you guys what I thought was going to win, tell you what actually won, give you guys my reactions. And then we will be on our merry way. I did start this a little bit late, so we didn't really get to talk a lot about the nominations for these. Um... The only one I will get to talk about is the Oscar nominations, but that'll be happening in an, in a few weeks. But without further ado, I think let's just quit dilly-dallying and let's get into the Golden Globes. So this one was painful to watch. I actually watched it, but it was so long. And, that's be, and I really dislike some of these award shows because they cram both film and TV into the same award show and i understand what they're trying to do and look there are people that are just fans of tv watching it for the tv and that's fine and i'm I, you know i'm not going to make a big deal about it but these shows are obnoxiously long because they're trying to cram both um film and tv in at the same time so it was a little painful to watch because it was like almost four hours long the oscars will be better because it's just film um but we'll get into it i just did the film categories that were applicable to me there are some categories like documentaries and short films that aren't applicable to me because I haven't seen any of them. So I'm not going to even um, predict them. So when we get into my Oscar predictions in a few, in a, about a week or so, I will not have every category on here. There's a few categories that I didn't predict because I can't, I haven't seen any of the films, but that's besides the point. So we're going to just get into it and just kind of go through right now. So we had best original song. I wanted Into the Unknown from Frozen 2 to win. I thought Into the Unknown would win. And it turned out to be Rocket Man. And, and I, that's a front runner, I guess. I didn't know that, so that's on me. Um, but I got that first one wrong. Um, best original score? I had Randy Newman that I wanted to win. I thought he would win for Marriage Story. He didn't. It was the Joker score, which now looking at it makes perfect sense because it was a, a character in itself in the Joker. Best foreign film? I wanted Parasite to win. I thought it would win. And guys, we got one right. It did win, thankfully. Um, best animated film. I wanted How to Train Your Dragon 3 to win. I knew it wasn't, but I wanted it to. I thought Toy Story 4 would win. And guys, like the biggest surprise of the night, Missing Link took home the Golden Globe for best animated film. Throw a Missing Link a bone, I guess. I, I don't know. That, that will not happen at the Oscars. It will be Toy Story 4. But hey... Good for you, Missing Link. That's awesome. Best screenplay. I wanted Noah Baumbach to win for Marriage Story. I thought he would win. 
Tarantino won for Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. That doesn't really surprise me. That was a good script as well. Best Director. I wanted Todd Phillips to win, but this was before I saw 1917. Wanted Todd Phillips to win for Joker. I thought Bong Joon-ho was the front runner, but Sam Mendes for 1917 won. And now I fully understand that because I've seen 1917 now, so I can actually comment on that. Best Supporting Actor. Wanted Al Pacino to win. Thought Al Pacino would win. Brad Pitt would win. Now, you're going to see in the Critics' Choice, my my predictions are a lot more on par and a lot more accurate because, admittedly, I had not done a lot of research going into the Golden Globes. So a lot of people thought, oh, Brad Pitt's the front runner. Why did you pick Al Pacino? I just picked based off of gut and hadn't done a lot of research. But going into the Critics' Choice, I did a lot more research. So you'll see I was a little more on par for the Critics' Choice Awards. Best Supporting Actress wanted Laura Dern to win, thought she would win, and she did win. Best Actor in a Musical and Comedy, I wanted Roman Griffin Davis to win, I thought he would win, and Taron Edgerton won. Best Actress in a Musical and Comedy, I wanted Beanie Feldstein to win for Booksmart, I knew she wouldn't, I knew it was going to be Aquafina because I said Aquafina would win, and she did. And probably the easiest one to predict best actor in drama i wanted bale or adam driver to win i knew they wouldn't because joaquin was gonna win and he did best actress in the genre i wanted scarlett johansson to win i thought she would win she didn't it was renee zellweger i should have known I, I picked her off a gut and i should have known it was going to be renee best picture in musical and comedy wanted jojo rabbit to win i thought it would win and once upon a time in hollywood won and best picture drama i wanted marriage story to win i thought the irishman would win in 1917 won and that was before I saw 1917 once again. So it was pretty warranted. I wasn't that surprised after I saw the film. So to to round out the Golden Globes, I went 4 for 14. That's that's pretty rough. I do say so myself. I didn't do great on the Oscars last year either, but I wasn't as up to date with all of the Oscar stuff. I'm feeling a little better this year going into the Oscars about some of my predictions because I've seen a lot more of the films. I have a lot more of a perspective and I think I know where they're going to go. All right, so Critics' Choice Awards. Now, what's different with these is that I have the could win category. I didn't have that in the first one. I just had want to win and should win. I have the could win category, which is ones that were that have a shot of upsetting and um I think let's just stop dilly down and let's just get right into it. So, best score. I wanted Joker to win. I thought 1917 could win, but I said Joker should win. And Joker did, because now I'm I'm with it. <laughs> best song, Into the Unknown, I wanted to win. Glass Cow from Wild Rose could have won. And I put Love Me Again from um, Rocket Man should win, and it did. You guys see. I did my research, I thought about it, I'm a little more versed. We're two for two to start out. Moving on to best foreign film. Wanted Parasite to win. Portrait of a Lady on Fire could have won, but I, I thought Parasite would win and it did. Then we move on to best sci-fi and horror. I wanted Avengers Endgame to win because it's my favorite movie of the year. Us, I said, could have won, and I said us should have won, and us did win. So that one was not very surprising then we move on to best comedy i wanted book smart to win you guys know i love book smart i thought jojo rabbit could win i said the farewell should have won but dolomite is my name ended up taking it which was a little bit of a surprise not a huge surprise but a little bit of a surprise but i was happy to see eddie murphy walk away with that critics choice award i thought it was great and the movie was pretty good as well then we have best action movie i wanted avengers endgame I thought Avengers Endgame could have won. I thought I thought 1917 should have won. And Avengers Endgame won. So that's a yellow. That means my could win ended up winning. So that's a yellow. Best animated feature. Let's see if the Critics' Choice botched this one as well. Wanted How to Train Your Dragon 3 to win. I put Missing Link as a could win just in case. But I said Toy Story 4 should win and Toy Story 4 did win. Then we have this... Be, mm, yeah. Best visual effects. I wanted Avengers Endgame to win. I thought Ford v Ferrari could win. And I said Avengers Endgame should win. And Avengers Endgame did win. Then we move on to Best Hair and Makeup. 
I wanted Joker to win. Once Upon a Time in Hollywood could win. I thought Dolomite is my name would win, but it didn't. It ended up being bombshell. And now that I've done more research and heard about it, that makes a lot of sense. I guess that's the front runner. So that is an early prediction for the Oscar for me is for Bombshell to win. Best costume design. I wanted Once Upon a Time in Hollywood to win. I thought Rocket Man could win. I thought Dolomite is my name should have won. And Dolomite is my name did win. Then we move on to Best Editing. I wanted 1917 to win. I thought Once Upon a Time in Hollywood could win. And I said 1917 should win. And 1917 did win. That, that was no surprise for me. The editing in that film is absolutely insane. And we move on to Best Cinematography. Again, I wanted 1917 to win. I think Deakins deserves this like over anyone. I thought that I said the Joker could have won. But again, I think 1917 should have won, and it did. I think that 1917 is the front runner for cinematography at the Oscars. I would be shocked if it didn't win. Best production design. I wanted Once Upon a Time in Hollywood to win. I thought 1917 could have won, but I said Once Upon a Time in Hollywood should have won, and it did. This is one that threw me for a loop. I w best adapted screenplay. I wanted Little Women. I thought Joker could win. I thought Jojo Rabbit should win. I should have stuck with my gut because Little Women won. That made me so happy. I love Little Women. Greta Gerwig wrote and directed a fantastic film and it deserves more love and it won't get that much because it didn't get a lot of Oscar noms. I am happy that uh, Saoirse Ronan got nominated for Best Actress, but she's not gonna win. It's gonna be Renee Zellweger, but that's just me. Then we move on to Best Original Screenplay. One in Marriage Story. I thought Parasite could win. And based off of the Golden Globes, I thought Once Upon a Time in Hollywood should win. And it did. Then we move on to Best Director. I wanted the Safdie Brothers to win for Uncut Gems. I thought Bong Joon-ho could win. And I thought Sam Mendes should win. And it ended up being a tie between Bong Joon-ho and Sam Mendes. So I actually predicted both, basically. Moving on to Best Ensemble. I wanted Marriage Story to win. I thought Once Upon a Time in Hollywood could win, but I, I was so, I was so, this one I was so certain on, and I'm so pissed that I got it wrong. I was certain that Knives Out would win, and it didn't. It was The Irishman. I was so mad. I was like, what? But I'm not going to trip on it. I'm just a little disappointed, but that's all. And then we move on to Best Young Actor. Roman Griffin Davis, I thought, sh uh, I wanted to win. Noah Jupe for Honey Boy could have won, but in the end, I thought Roman Griffin Davis would win, and he did. Very happy about that. He was fantastic in Jojo Rabbit. Moving on now to the big ones of the night. Best Supporting Actress. I wanted Scarlett Johansson to win. I thought Florence Pugh could have won, but in the end, Laura Dern should have won, and she did. Best Supporting Actor. I wanted Al Pacino. I thought Tom Hanks could win, but I put Brad Pitt to win i thought he, he should win and he did best actress saoirse ronan i wanted to win scarlett johansson i thought could win renee zellweger i said would win and she did and then best actor i wanted driver or sandler to win i thought adam driver could win but in the end joaquin phoenix was gonna win and he did and then the final one of the night best picture i wanted ford v ferrari to win i thought either once upon a time in hollywood or parasite could win but I thought in the end, 1917 would win. But Once Upon a Time in Hollywood did take it home. So that's another yellow. So in the end, I'm not going to tell you how many I got right because I got a lot right. I'll tell you the ones I got wrong. I got Best Comedy, Best Hair and Makeup, Best Adapted Screenplay, and Best Ensemble wrong. And I got Best Action Movie and Best Picture yellow, which means I thought they could win. I didn't say they would win, but they were still in that area. So that was six out of, I think, 23 that I didn't nail on the head, which means... I had a much better record second time around, which makes me feel better about the Oscars. Of course, anything could happen. The nominations came out. A lot of stuff was flipped on its head, so we don't know right now what is going to happen, but it's very exciting. We will see. I still have 1917 as my front runner, but Once Upon a Time in Hollywood is making a charge for Best Picture, and 
it could win. I have it in could win right now with Parasite for the Oscars, but I still have 1917 as my front runner. But we'll see how the SAGs go. We'll see how all these other awards go beforehand. The SAGs are going to be a big part in this, in these final predictions for me. Um, if 1917 can run away with the SAG, I think, I wouldn't say it's a lock, but I would say I feel a lot better about my prediction for 1917. If Once Upon a Time in Hollywood wins the SAG, we're looking at a pretty close ball game. I, I'm not going to lie with you. Um, but guys, that's pretty much it. Again, let me know down in the comments below. How did you do in your predictions of the Critics' Choices or the Golden Globes? What do you think about the Oscar nominations? Anything about award season at all? Let me know down below in the comments. Let me know how you like it. Do you like this form of video? Do you like talking about award season? It ain't going anywhere. I love to talk about it, so I'm going to continue to talk about it. But I want to hear from you guys down below. Guys, that's pretty much it. Thank you all so much for taking the time to like, comment, subscribe. We will potentially have our first episode of the Schmodown Show tomorrow. I don't know yet. I do not know. It depends on when the draft is uploaded. Um, depending. It may be next week. But guys, that's pretty much it. Have a rest of your day. We'll see you in the next video.